Hi everyone, it's Elizabeth from Elpis Astrology at elpisastrology.com. Thanks for joining me today. So today I am going to do my take on the astrology and horoscopes uh, for June 2024. So this month we have a new moon in Gemini, a full moon in Capricorn, and actually there's two full moons in a row in Capricorn. There will be one uh, next month as well. We have the summer solstice, uh, that'll be up here on the 20th of June as well. Uh, Pluto is going to be retrograde at one degree of Aquarius all of June. Um, so I wanted to start off with just to kind of wrap up this whole uh, double comet um, or the uh, Ponsbrook comet, the uh, 12P Ponsbrook comet that is still kind of in our atmosphere. Um, uh, by the 2nd of June, it will be the closest it will come to Earth. But in terms of visuals, um, everything that I was reading uh, really says that it's going to be the southern hemisphere. So my Australian folks um, and India and all those kinds of uh, continents are going to be able to see it more clearly. But even they will have a little difficulty because even in the southern hemisphere from uh, looking at Stellarium anyway, um, and I'm going to put a link here for those folks that want to put this comet in on Stellarium, I'm going to put a link to a really easy video that helps you go through Stellarium and put it on. Um, I did it uh, quite easily. Uh, but basically it's going to be near the horizon uh, in the evening uh, for folks that are in the Southern Hemisphere, but you'll still be able to see it uh, in June, but it is kind of on its way out. But I didn't in my last video when I talked about this Pons Brooks comet, talk about well, what happened uh, 71 or so years ago, because this is about a 71 year cycle, this comet comes around. So we're looking really here at 1953, 1954. Um, it looks like it was identified in both 53 as well as 54, but of note, 1953 for sure was significant for events. Let me just give you a few of them. And for those folks um, uh, that were born around this, this year, these two years, there may be some significance that come back in your life, some big messages, but let's go through it. So we had Edmund Hillary, and uh, Tenzing Norgay uh, go up to the top of um, uh, Mount Everest and uh, claim that they've reached the top, right? So these were the first folks that did that. Queen Elizabeth, she had her coronation in 1953. Um, we also had uh, Watson and Crick, as well as um, Rosalind Franklin, uh, discover the the whole um, helix, right? The DNA helix. Um, so we had Stalin, uh, who was like one of the most murderous uh, dictators of our time, died. And um, I didn't realize it was so not so long ago that Salk uh, actually invented the polio vaccine. And in fact, apparently he inoculated his whole family before then it rapidly went out to the world population, right? For everyone to be vaccinated um, against polio. So pretty significant stuff, right? When we look at that whole um, comet that I spoke about, the other thing that's, that happened in 1953 was Dwight Eisenhower, which was, he was a Republican, was inaugurated uh, in 1953. So that's another thing that happened. So there was a lot of like, um, changes with regards to government positions or monarchy positions uh, in 1953. And he's just uh, the final one that I wanted to mention. So when we look at the first uh, lunation of the month, well, it is gonna be a new moon in Gemini. And nicely, we have Mercury in Gemini as well as Venus. So we've got the ruler of Gemini, Mercury, in its home sign. So just this alone is very positive, right? Um, this is going to be on the 6th of June at 5.37 a.m. and that's Pacific Daylight Time. It's at 16 Gemini, 17 minutes. And, you know, one of the things that came to my mind was that this is going to be a very flirtatious, you know, we're entering into um, the summer season coming up, right, with the summer solstice, sort of mid-month uh, in June. I just took this as a very flirtatious time, you know, maybe more on a personal level. Uh, 
but it also speaks to, you know, changeable emotions as well. So it could bring in some new romances for folks, but they may not lead to anything more than kind of like a, a summer fling or summer flirtation type thing. But the other thing, of course, that Gemini stands for is communications. And with all the support of Mercury and Venus here, we're really talking about a lot of communications going on, right? And this moon and sun also sextile the north nodes, along with Chiron, that's in uh, Aries, right? So there's going to be some new information with regards to our collective and our future moving forward, right? In terms of a new start of some sort. Now, the only fly in the ointment is that the sun and moon is square to Saturn in Pisces, right? Anything in Gemini squares anything in Pisces. And, you know, really, I saw this as... Um, I actually saw this as a positive thing because with so much Gemini, there could be a lot of excitement and a lot of chatter and um, a, a lot of information being tossed around, but not necessarily important information or relevant information. That square to Saturn can say, let's do some facts checks on that. So I think we're going to see a lot of activity with regards to a lot of chatter um, and that, you know, we're going to have that fact check going on too, which is awesome, right? And I think this may may lend itself more to the political sphere, uh, but it could also be uh, in our life as well. So as I said, this is around 16 degrees of Gemini. So for you to have in your own chart something significant like your ascendant or your sun at this degree point, this could actually promote a whole newness for your year. So I want to wish all my clients, as well as my viewers that are Geminis, um, a happy new year to you. Um, my daughter Victoria was born around this, this time. Um, she is a Gemini, so I wish her happy birthday. Uh, towards the end of the month, I have my granddaughter Penelope, who is her birthday, although she just enters into cancer uh, for her son. So happy birthday to both of those. Um, <clears throat> when we look at other things, we look at Jupiter here trying to Pluto that is retrograde, but still this is really positive. So Jupiter is going to expand favorably anything with regards to what? Humanitarian types of activities. Um, electronic communications like the social media could be a buzz uh, around that 6th of June and new moon in Gemini. The ruler itself, Mercury, will be at 6 degrees of Gemini. And at that time, um, Jupiter will be approaching uh, Mercury. And so I saw this as um, we've got a lot of legal stuff going on right now um, that we have all over the news. So I think that this is going to bring, once Jupiter hits uh, Mercury, uh, just uh, sort of around that 17th of June time period, um, I think where, where Mercury and Venus will be conjunct at uh, zero degrees of Cancer. I think that may be a time period where we're really going to see some significance going on here um, with regards to some kind of thing coming up uh, with regards to all these legal matters that um, will have some substance behind it. So the 17th of June is when Mercury and Venus will be at zero degrees of uh, cancer, and of course, cancer can refer to things like uh, the mother, but it can also refer to our homeland, and that's how I see it. Some new starts here, and this is right around the solstice time period as well. Um, so we've talked about the new moon here. Uh, we've talked about the Mercury conjunct Venus. So certainly if you've got something, say, around that zero degree mark of cancer, um, this could bring in what? It could bring in some good news about money for you. It could bring in some good news about a love in your life. Um, but it can also bring in some good news about a family situation because cancer does really refer to cancer situation. In particular, your mother is featured. Um, and because the solstice begins around, uh, does begin around the zero degree mark of cancer, um, that 17th of June could be a standout with regards to something happening that manifests more clearly, not only say at the um, solstice itself on the 20th, uh, but for that whole time period, right? The three months before we go to the next um, new season, right? Okay, speaking of which, uh, we have the summer solstice 
and that is going to be on the 20th of June at 1.51 p.m. Pacific Daylight Time. It will be with uh, Venus and Mercury, like I said, in Cancer. The Moon, um, although it's not it's it's not in its it's in its detriment um, in terms of uh, it being in Sagittarius. I always like the Moon in Sagittarius. I just think so. The Moon will be at fifteen degrees of Sagittarius, and I just think this is going to lighten up that whole summer solstice. Uh, the whole time period for us, right? Because this kind of puts a stamp on the kind of energies that'll be around for at least three months or so. And so this is positive, positive outlook for our future, right? Now, Sagittarius also rules things like the legal profession and foreign lands, publishing, uh, that type of thing. So all these things could come in in a positive way as well. That moon, though, does square Saturn. So we've got another moon squaring Saturn, right? We had it at the new moon. Now we still have it at the summer solstice with the moon in Sagittarius. And so again, this is like slowing things down. Take your time to look at things. Don't get emotionally drawn into things. Look at the facts to see what's going on here. Now, Mercury will be uh, sextiling Mars at this time. So this also says there's going to be opportunities to get your messages out, to get information out to gather information in at this time. So we're still talking about the summer solstice here. And Venus at this time, the summer solstice, is approaching um, Mercury. Um, I already spoke about the conjunction, um, but it is Venus going towards Mercury. So it's like, um, this could also bring in information literally about females, but it can also bring um, the money markets in here as well. I personally think that this, and then there's another aspect at the end of the month, is going to bring up again the, the whole thing around um, anything to do with reproductive rights, right? Yeah, so I think that may be brought up as well at this time too. Maybe even some groups of people, women in particular, um, putting voice to that and maybe maybe boots on the ground too, where you, you know, start marching for it as well. We haven't seen really any of that in a big way recently. So that may still be on its way to us. So the next lunation we have is going to be the full moon in Capricorn. And that's going to be on the 21st of June at 6.08 PM. And this is at one degree of Capricorn, seven minutes. And as I mentioned at the beginning, there's going to be a second full moon next month as well, but it'll be at 29 degrees of Capricorn. So we get the beginning of Capricorn and then the end of Capricorn as well. Um, and of course, because it's a full moon, we have the sun in the opposite sign of Cancer at one degree of Cancer, right? So we have a lineup here of, First of all, we've got the moon in Capricorn, but it's really kind of on its own in many respects, except by the opposition with the sun. It's really the sun that is taking um, center uh, place here uh, because it's gonna have the Venus as well as Mercury all lined up in Cancer. So there really is gonna be this focus here on our homeland, um, females, reproductive rights, um, pregnancies, anything to do with that, discussions and information being brought up here. And remember, we have Neptune at 29 degrees of Pisces at this time too. So that's a culminating energy, right? A culminating energy with regards to our spiritual lives um, and as well as our aspirations and inspirations as well, right? Uh, we have Mercury that is sextile um, Mars at this time still, we had that also up at the summer solstice, which was just literally the day before, right? So this full moon happens right after the summer solstice. So it's kind of tied into it, even though obviously the moons are different, right? And so we also have that happening where this whole Mercury sextile Mars is carried on for another day, where great activity around communications, around information, that type of thing. Uh, especially gathering information, right?
All right, on the 22nd of June, that's just going to be a day after the full moon, uh, we have a lot happening in water signs. We have the Sun, Mercury, Venus, Saturn, as well as Neptune, all in water signs. So I think because this is the day after the full moon, to me, it lends itself to a lot of emotion here, a lot of deep feelings and a lot of deep emotion around whatever comes up in terms of the full moon. Now, this is a, usually a culmination. It can be an ending. It can just be this big, gigantic spotlight put on things here uh, of importance. But that whole lineup of all those planets in the water signs, as I said, it can make it a very emotional full moon because it's only the day after that full moon, right? So we end the month on the 30th of June, um, where we have Venus sextiling Mars. And here we're looking at Cancer and um, uh, Taurus. We are also going to have Mercury sextiling Uranus at 25 degrees. And that's the Cancer as well as um, Taurus signs that are involved here. So we really wrap up the month here. And and let's not forget also that, you know, when we've got Mars in Taurus, it is in its detriment. Now, generally speaking, it's not the end of the world to have a planet in its detriment. But what it does do is it kind of has that planet, and in this case it's Mars, acting contrary to the sign. And so what does Mars like to do? Mars loves to move forward, action, um, all that type of thing, right? Lots of energy. And so it says that it's going to be contrary to that. And so this may be more, in terms of Mars, I think a slow burn, <laughs> um, a slow release is better than like running around and trying to get things done. So this may also be a time, if we look at the sextile with Venus, um, where there's some new introduction here uh, with regards to our money markets again. So this could be something that happens at the end of the month um, that is unexpected, um, that some kind of information may come out with regards to our money markets. But hey, Venus sextiling Mars, just as a transit itself, if you've got something, say, around that 15 degree mark of Cancer, Taurus, this could bring in an opportunity for a relationship, right? I mean, when we think about it, Taurus is ruled by Venus too, so there's a positive setup here, right? Now, with that Mercury also sextiling Uranus, this is unexpected news coming our way. I mean, maybe something else is going to pop out with regards to all the legal matters going on right now um, that is going to be significant for us. But we're talking about, you know, Mercury being in... Cancer, and as I said, cancer really refers to the family. It refers to uh, the mother in particular, um, reproductive rights, um, anything to do with um, having children, that type of thing. So we may end the month with more unexpected um, information coming in here and maybe unexpected discussions um, of import, right? So when we give a little peek to July, we're looking at a new moon in Cancer and a full moon again in Capricorn. So this is the second full moon in Capricorn over two months, June and July. And we will also have Mars um, is going to be sextiling um, Neptune at 29 degrees. So this is going to be significant too. This will be some kind of opportunities with regards to, I think, changing up the old guard finally and getting rid of it, right? Because the 29 degrees is a culminating uh, degree of energies and Mars is energy. So we'll talk about that next month in more detail. So let's move on now to the actual either sun signs and or ascendants. You pick which one. I would say it might be a good idea to listen to both. Start off with your ascendant so you understand the area, areas of life potentially being involved here. And then listen to your sun sign to just gain additional information that might be important. 
So Sagittarius, that new moon in Gemini, is in your opposite sign. And so this puts a focus on your seventh house of partnerships, business partnerships, marriage partnerships, and clients. And so there could be a new start happening in this area, but it could equally be a new start for your partner as well. So it can go either way or both ways. But I see this as very positive with regards to any kind of communications. If you are putting together a partnership, if you are seeking new clients and are putting out some kind of new um, initiative to get more clients coming in, that new moon in Gemini around the 6th of June is going to be very positive for you. Like it's putting the messages out um, are going to be favored for you with regards to clients uh, as well as business partnerships. Now, it can also bring in communications from a potential marriage partner as well and or your marriage partner, right? Because that's also seventh house. Um, yeah, so you may have more communications for some reason with regards to your marriage partner as well as your business partner as well as your clients. All three of those can be indicated here, right? But it definitely puts an emphasis on communications with other people is what it really, and new starts that way. When we look at that, um, and, and don't forget, you also have Jupiter there too, right? So this is very lucky. So it could also spell out that your partner has some very beneficial lucky things happen to them that you can benefit from at the new moon. Because Jupiter is also going to be in Gemini at that time, supporting the new moon doesn't conjunct it, but it's still in Gemini. So we look at that full moon in Capricorn. Well, we know that's your second house. And so for some Sagittarians, you just may be deciding to leave a job, you know, and leave that income that you were making uh, behind and decide to go on and get another job because this one isn't working out for you. It's certainly going to illuminate something regarding A, your value, and then your value based on what money you're making. And so you may decide that the job that you're doing right now, you're not getting enough money for what you're doing. And if we think about it, <clears throat> we're also going to have another full moon uh, in your second house in July. So this could also be a two-part thing. Maybe you're going to leave a job, leave the income that you're making in June, and decide to, even though it's a full moon, that full moon in uh, July is at 29 degrees, which is a culminating energy. Um, you may be able to leave <laughs> the money that you were earning that wasn't enough, and then actually get the money that you want. And this could be through a new job, or perhaps it's going to be through um, the current job that you have, but there's a two-part process here with regards to some big spotlight being shone on where you earn your money. Now, I'm thinking also, because this is Capricorn, there could be something happening uh, in the place that you earn money. Um, and certainly, I've been through a lot of these things where, you know, there's takeovers all the time. So I'm thinking that could also be up here for some Sagittarians where there may be a takeover of some sort where, um, you know, your value is seen one way in June, but another way in July. Um, and it certainly is a change in and a spotlight on the value of yourself as well as your um, income that you earn. All right. Take care of yourself, Sagittarius. All right, everybody. Um, I'm wishing everybody a, um, a happy start to their summer because, of course, the official start here in the Northern Hemisphere uh, starts this year uh, on the 20th of June, certainly Pacific time. Um, but then, of course, we're looking at the Southern Hemisphere where we're looking at um, the beginning of winter, right? If you'd like your chart done um, or you'd like a combo done where I put together uh, a quick look at your astrology and I do a tarot reading, I have a service to do that too. I love doing anything to do with uh, astrology 
as well as the tarot cards. So feel free to reach out to me. If you're not sure what to do, you can always just email me and we can discuss stuff back and forth, or you can go directly to my services tab uh, and pay there. But I really am wishing everybody a very, very happy and positive and loving and supportive um, summertime period. Get out there and enjoy yourself uh, and don't be afraid of being you. I'll talk to you all next month in July. Bye for now. Sending you lots of love.